Okay, everybody's saying it. The bubble is coming. The bubble is coming. All right. Is it really coming? Is it really something that is on the forefront? Is it something that, hey, uh, we're going to have this catastrophic 2008, you know, real estate market's going to hit a tank. We're going to go over that. We're going to go over a couple of the key messages that come into play and including, well, a kind of a touchy subject regarding limited service agents and making sure that you are well, keeping a good eye on your family's best interest. So with that, hey, make sure you subscribe. Uh, we want to thank everybody so far. We hit over a thousand subscribers. Uh, that means that you guys are liking what you're hearing. And more importantly, you're telling others, hey, this is good information to come in and listen to. Again, it's free. There's no obligation. And we're just, we just kind of give you the facts and you get to, well, make your own decision after that. So with that, let's talk about a few things. First, one, uh, as we talk about financing, and in fact, uh, in here in a little bit, Dan Golden's going to come in. He's going to talk to us a little bit about what, what is trending in mortgages. He's going to talk a little bit uh, about kind of what is going on, what is changing, and that's part of what our conversation will be about today also. So uh, as he comes in, when we talk about basis points, somebody said, uh, I think it was Doug actually asked me, he said, George, they keep talking about 50 basis points. What does that mean? All right, 50 basis points, each basis point is basically, you know, a 0.1%. So if you have 100 basis points, okay, that's, well, 1%. If you have 50 basis points, that's half a percent. And one of the things that you're going to be hearing about, both with Dan and myself, is that as our economy kind of moves along, we've, we've been uh, looking at and kind of predicting, hey, you know, where are we going to go? And as we see more inflation, and, you know, as an example, we just saw uh, mortgage rates take a significant drop. In fact, they, they took the biggest drop uh, I want to say it's uh, 20 basis points, okay, 0.2%, okay, of a drop, which is the biggest drop that we've seen since 2020. And as far as a, a short window, one day type of drop. Why? Well, you had all of your big industrial investors <laughs> that, that got uh, looked at what was going on and was watching some of the stock market free fall. They pull out, they go into something safe. It's kind of like a turtle. If you think about the turtle, right? Turtle is out there, it's doing its thing. You go, you get close, you go to do something, whoop, it sucks back in. Well, that when they suck back in, they're going into bonds, they're going to mortgage-backed securities, they're going to 10-year treasury. Why? Because it's safe. That's, that is safe territory. So they will pull into them. When they pull into the 10-year treasuries, into the mortgage-backed securities, into bonds, that improves a bond value, which drops mortgage rates. That's why you saw that distinct difference. So as they evaluate, uh, you know, kind of what the feds are doing, what's going on globally, right? There's a few things going on right now. The industrial investors move in and out. And that's why, because again, mortgage-backed securities, the bonds, 10-year treasury, two-year treasuries, those are all publicly traded, okay? So again, as the investors move into it, they improve, rates come down. That's why you see it do this, because then as they get more comfortable, the turtle sticks its head out, they move out of those, bonds, mortgage-backed securities go down in value, mortgage rates go up, and they're investing in other things. It's their safe haven. So understand, every time we see something bad happen, or the Fed say something, well, that they should never say, including the guy, Powell, who said that he doesn't really know what he's doing. Well, that's not exactly what he said, but that was the implication. Anyway, that scares everybody. Boom, they move out of uh, stocks, move into, you know, secure, safe investments. They're protecting your investment, taking care of making sure that uh, they can invite other investors in later because of the way they perform. That's how they protect it. All right. The other thing is a lot of folks are comparing our market to 2008 saying, oh my gosh, it's going to crash. It's going to be horrible. And I, just, and I always just... I shake my head and I'm like, guys, it's two different stories. It's two different games altogether. You know, they'll look at something like this. It says, hey, listen, 
George, our inventory went up 75%. Well, 74.7, but let's round it up, 75%. That's a big number. Yeah, kind of, right? Well, that's 3,600 homes year over year, okay? Just the running day average was 1,345 homes. Well, remember last week it was almost 2,300 homes, okay? That's 1,000 more than it was to, you know, today, from a week ago. But yet we're still taking off 1,758. We closed 1,577 homes over the last seven days, you know, our seven day running average. Okay, so when we look at that, we still have sales, we still have closings, we still have in, you know, homes coming on market. You might say, okay, well, why is that different than 2008? Because today with you know, roughly 9,000 homes that are available, okay, if I show you a chart, not if, I will, I'm gonna show you 2008, okay? So Vikas will, will show this up there in a better, but you can see the arrow. You can see where today is. That's our inventory. Light green is inventory available for sale. Dark green are solds, right? Okay. Well, in 2008, we had a peak of 51,415 homes. 51,000, 51,000 homes. We're down here. That's the just below 9,000. Okay. That is a massive <laughs> disparity. Okay. Well, so when I say to folks, hey, listen, we don't have enough inventory. We don't have enough inventory really to fall. And people are like, well, you know, look at all the homes that are coming on market. Okay. And Vigas will put up a different one, but you can see this is our normal summer. You can see how that comes up. Vigas will put up the other chart that's just gonna show you the last, uh, what is it? I think 10 years. And you're gonna see it comes way up here and it's gonna drop way down. The light green again being the active inventory. And that is, again, as you can see, it's massive. When you go from 50,000, we're down here at 9,000, we don't have that many homes and we only have more homes today because buyers have pulled back. Why? Because they got that $100,000 haircut. <laughs> That's why. There's there's some, you know, the, the oh, I missed it. Um, and they're starting to acclimate. How do I know? Because sales are picking up. How do I know? Holy smokes, look, we're, we are still out punching what's new coming on market. Sure. We had our normal seasonal inventory of sellers coming on. Why? Because they always come on before uh, Memorial Weekend. Always. It shows in the numbers. <laughs> always. It's not, un it's not unexpected. All right. So well, what, what is expected? Hey, look, happy Memorial Day to everybody. Absolutely. Remembering those folks that, that uh, have fallen to protect us, to save what we are as uh, as a nation and what we represent and don't ever let anybody take those freedoms away and the reason we have so many people coming into the country is because of those freedoms don't ever let those freedoms go uh, because to get them back will be pretty near impossible just saying all right you've got students that are getting out of school you've got people planning on vacations hey listen We've already started to see the real estate goes down, the trifecta. <laughs> so the, the real estate trifecta of vacations is upon us. We are here. Expect it to continue on a slowing trend. Some of the, 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 you know, the agents who we're in communication with, even some of our clients, they said they have noticed a significant slowdown. Sure. It is completely expected. Do you panic? Absolutely not. Why? because it's normal. Again, this is why putting your home in the MLS is not marketing. This is why you have to get your home in front of eyeballs in other ways, okay? As an example, so some of the limited service companies out there, in fact, Rex is, uh, they're questioning if that organization, which is a discount brokerage, a limited service discount brokerage, I don't like to call them discount. Um, there's a lot of them in our area that uh, agents that 
their only negotiating tool is to to cut their commission, right? That's their that's their tool, right? Because they have this uh, perception, or they give you the perception, hey, look at I'm going to save you money, and you're not. Okay, understand when you have a market that is slowing down, when we have buyers pulling back, when you have interest rates going up, and you have to make sure that that buyer still qualifies from the date that you go under contract versus the date that you close. Did something happen interest rate wise? Did they not lock in on time? That is changing that outcome. Did that loan program not exist at the end? And did they not tie it up soon enough, right? To where a transaction fails, you need to make sure you have somebody who understands a either how to keep it together alternatives or how best to protect you. And as a buyer, how do you protect getting your earnest money back? If it is a seller, <laughs> you keep that earnest money. Look, when you have folks that all they're concerned about is getting you under contract and getting you to close, they don't have skill sets. So be super careful. I know that's a touchy subject and I know that you might think that's self-serving and it is not. Okay. What I'm saying is be careful. That's what I am saying. Make sure that person knows what you're doing. Just this last week, we've had a couple of scenarios that fortunately our skill sets allowed us to, to protect somebody, one of our clients. Well, actually a couple of our clients. Okay. That is the best thing because they're still happy. They're still closing. But unless you have those skill sets, it's not going to happen. So be wary. Okay. When we get back here, we talk about pended. Notice that our pendants are down about 2000 year over year. Same thing with the number of homes sold. This is down year over year by about 2000 homes. That's not that much. That's just half of Washington state. When we come over here, sure, our numbers are down just a tad bit, but they're not much. Again, it's not the 50, <laughs> where is that again? It's such a funny chart. It's not the 51,000 <laughs> homes. And that's super important to understand because it's kind of like when you're walking down, you take a look at what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay. If we think that mortgage rates are starting to peak out based on what the 10 year treasuries are doing based on some of the inflation metrics. No, we're not done with inflation, but the feds who increase mortgage uh, or not uh, short term, right? HELOCs, home equity line of credit, car payments, credit cards. That's what they affect business loans as they control the flow of money and they just need to quit printing money. But as they control that flow and they increase the cost of that money, that's going to slow down part of the economy. The question is then as they slow that down, what will that have to do with the, the actual interest rates? And that will actually start to come back as industrial investors move into a safer environment, uh, which will then uh, lower long-term mortgages, your 30 year type mortgages, and that will be very beneficial. But it also has an economic side, right? So we need to keep that in mind. As far as just looking at the overall, what is our industry doing? Hey, we're doing really well. Uh, rates are doing well. They've, they've actually come down, as we said, the, the biggest fall since 2020 in mortgage rates. And again, because the industrial investors moved into the mortgage-backed securities, bonds, things like that. Non-owner occupied, starting to rally a little bit better. And be mindful of the uh, the the holiday trifecta uh, in for buyers. Hey, uh, I'm just telling you right now, the biggest takeaway today for buyers, get back out there. Rates came down, inventory is, is, is up, so you have more options, less competition because people are out doing other things. Uh, Dan and I happen to be in town this weekend, hence why we're doing the video. Uh, we've already had tons and tons of conversations, which is awesome, and we appreciate every single one of you that uh, that we get a chance to talk to. In the meantime, if you have any questions, hey, post it. Make sure that you subscribe. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed. Hope you guys find this valuable. Keep asking questions. We get great questions. We normally answer them in about 30 minutes. If you have any questions, post them. Love to hear what you have to say. In the meantime, have a fabulous Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy your Monday off, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care.